This is the 2020 Cadillac XT6 all-wheel drive premium luxury with the platinum package. We'd like to thank our friends at Snell Motors in Mankato, Minnesota, where they sell Buick, GMC, and Cadillac vehicles for loaning us this 2020 Cadillac XT6. Hey folks, this is the 2020 Cadillac XT6 all-wheel drive premium luxury with the platinum package and today we're doing a video on the interior technology the tech driver's information center and the infotainment center so we're going to start with the driver's information center so the first thing i'll point out is the q system comes in with two screens in the driver's information center so you see where the blue line is on top of that is one screen and below that's another basically what you can change and manipulate is in the lower screen and what's in the upper screen uh, reflects certain preset things. They, they may change from time to time, like you notice your, uh, your mode selector here. If I switch modes, that emblem's gonna change. But I can't physically go in there and, and through the driver's information center and tell it. Uh, you have your um, sign reading, speedometer, or your speed limit sign reading. This is your cruise control indicator. Um, and while we're on that, this does have adaptive cruise control. And if you look on the steering wheel over here, there's a cancel button. And the way you go between um, dynamic cruise control and just regular cruise control is just by simply pushing and holding this. And then pretty soon a sign pops up saying regular cruise available. So now it's not the dynamic cruise. If I push and hold it again, adaptive cruise available. So that's just how you turn it on and off. Then of course you've got your digital speed and your compass. Now you can customize some of these things, okay? So if I, uh, I'm gonna go over here to the beginning. Uh, Cadillac puts this main uh, tabs across the front, uh, up atop here. So you've got, basically you've got information, media, navigation, phone, and settings. Okay. And to do that, I'm using the left right arrows on the steering wheel right here. I'm also using the, this is a scroll bar, and I can also click down on it for like an OK. Those are the only buttons I'm using right here. This is media stuff, like changing radio stations. Okay, so let's go back to information. Let's click on it, and we're going to go see what we have. You'll notice there's a little white line here. You see it go down. That sort of tells you that there's more things below what you're just seeing now, okay? So it's telling me we're in V6 mode. It's a 33.6 miles uh, distance we've gone, and there's our miles per gallon. Obviously, I was driving, so that's why it's not very good. Okay, you've got your fuel range. You've got your oil life. You've got your tire pressure. Uh, you've got, uh, let's see, air filter life. Um, you, and then anything that says a menu down here, if you click on it, you can usually reset it to zero or whatever. So it's a maintenance thing. Uh, and then you notice it shows me the back arrow. So if I want to get out, I just press that left arrow and I'm back out. Let's just keep going. There's a blank page. Um, if it says, yeah, anything down here with a blue circle and check mark, you can push OK and then you can edit it. So here I can do, um, like up here, if I want speed, I can I can check mark that if I want trip number two up there and one I can do that, and these are uh, will all show up on my information page screen and I'll show you that in a minute. Here's average speed. Let's just add some of these. I'm just clicking that wheel to do it. Uh, let's do battery voltage. Let's do coolant. Let's do oil temperature. I'm not sure if it's limited. We're gonna find out in a minute. Oh no, it's letting you click everything. Sometimes they're limited. All right. So now what I do is I go with my left arrow. And I'm gonna start to scroll through. Now, everything I check mark under info page options with the scroll wheel will start to show up. There's my speed, both sign reading and digital. 
There's my uh, trip one. Here's my trip two. Here's my fuel range, oil. This kind of stuff I went through. But you remember we added some things. So let's. Here's your following distance, driver assistance, battery voltage, tool and temperature. All that stuff can be added or taken away. So it is customizable. Okay. So uh, at, at, what I like though is at the top of the screen, a lot of these things stay pretty consistent. Um, your your digital miles per hour, your compass, that kind of stuff. I, I like that. Um, so you kind of have one thing that's there all the time and one thing that changes. All right, let's keep going. We want to go over one to the right. That's your media. So now if I go up and down, I'm going through channels of Sirius XM satellite. Okay, and just by rotating that rotary knob. And if I want to go further into it, it shows me that blue circle with the uh, check mark. And anytime you see that. It means there's more options if you click the rotary wheel. So I click it. Okay, now I can see do I want, what kind of radio or media do I want? Bluetooth, you know, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, favorites, favorite button setting, that kind of stuff. All right, I'm going to use the uh, back arrow button right here. Okay, and that just brings you back to the screen you were on. I'm going to press it one more time. And we're going to go over to navigation. Okay, now what this will do is this will display uh, like your turn by turn directions when you program your navigation on your infotainment screen and will show up in here. Um, you can click on this little button and you can go to recents or favorites. So if you store your home, your work, and place to go often, you don't even have to go into your navigation system on your infotainment. You just simply go here, scroll and say, I want to go to favorites or even recents. Apparently, I don't have any reasons. I need to drive the car longer. All right, so we're gonna go over one more. So I gotta go back left, left again to get to this main arrow. So I see these dual arrows up here. Now I go right. There is no phone connected, but this is where you could pull up and say, you know, you wanna dial somebody. You wanna um, oh, uh, do something with your phone. Dial text, I guess. Uh, do a voice text message, that kind of stuff, or receive texts or whatever. Uh, if I go one more over, now I'm onto the settings page. And up here I've got all sorts of things I can change. So I've got units. Um, so if I click on there, I can go US or metric. All right, that's where you change that. Uh, info page options. Okay, I already did this one. I know why it's kind of redundant, stuck there as well, but that's fine. Um, display. Okay, so I think the display is what we're seeing up here. So, for instance, if I take off digital speed, yes, this is where you affect this upper area. So, let me show you that again. I'm going to back out. I'll come back to it. So, here we are going across the screen. You're going to go until you get to that gear wheel right there. Then you're going to press that rotary knob in the middle. And then, using that and pressing on it, you can select or deselect things that you want to see. Do you want to see the, the, the speed limit? You know? Uh, you want to see your, I think digital speed is really nice. That yeah, compass, who cares where I'm going? Uh, fuel range, yeah, I better have that on because I need it. Uh, you can display time. Sometimes it's nice to have two clocks. There's one in your infotainment screen, but so those are the things you can customize right up here on the top screen. All right, and that takes us all the way through the driver's information screen. So, um, the rest of the stuff I kind of showed on the first video, but basically here's your volume up, volume down. This will scroll through your media channels. So if I go up here, here's my favorites. They pop right up. There only happens to be one favorite sort in this car. But do you notice how I just went and pushed it? I didn't have to go to the radio. I didn't have to do anything. I just clicked these buttons, and my favorites popped right up. So easy way to change stuff. So, you know, I would probably program a few things into the favorites. All right. Um, let's move over to the infotainment screen. So here we are. Uh, if I press the home screen, we're going to get a split screen. And this will display different things. But basically, you know, here you've got your navigation. And then here you have your media. Which are your two most common things that you're using. So it's really nice that Cadillac puts that in there so you can have that split screen anytime you want. And, of course, you can change uh, channels here. I'm just going to turn the volume physically down here. I think it just keeps popping up on me. Okay. You can also see things like your fan speed, your mode, your uh, dual temperatures on either side. Whoops radio station, that kind of stuff. So it is really nice to have that there. As far as kind of what are the guts of this thing, if we go in here, 
um, we have audio. So in the audio, um, if you want to preset a favorite, it says hold to set. If you find one, you just press and hold, and now it's saved. It's that easy. Now when you go to your stream wheel controls, you will be able to have, see, 101.7 showed up now. Okay? All right. Uh, you can select your sources right here. So I have AM, FM, uh, Sirius XM, uh, and then I can have Bluetooth. And if I had Apple CarPlay, Android Auto hooked up, then those would actually show up right here. This would become colored and active, uh, and you, you could tell that it was uh, ready to use. Um, the other things you got, you got HD radio. You can set your sound settings here, bass, treble, mid-range, your fade and balance, and then your sound mode. So depending on where you want the sound, there's presets, which I, I like. I usually drive mine with on just driver because I don't care what anyone else hears. All right. Um, now, let's go back to home screen quick. Uh, your phone, again, there's not one connected, but this is where you're going to see a lot of your phone information. Who recently called to your contacts? Um, the different phones that are available, because if your uh, significant other hooks their phone to it, it's always listed there, but you have to go in separately select it. Okay, I'm going to go. There is a, a physical home button here. It's kind of like a soft touch. So I can use that as well instead of the home button down here. Okay, you do have a Wi-Fi hotspot here. You can set this up for different users so that certain features are on or off depending on how you like them. Okay, and if you go into settings, you have three choices at the top. Okay, you've got you know system, which gives you, of course, um, you know the language, the time of the date, Wi-Fi hotspot, um, hotspot, privacy display, sounds, voice, that kind of stuff. Here's where you're updated. All right. And this is a wireless, so you should be able to uh, park at home and update it from your home Wi-Fi. You go to the next tab, you get apps. So you can turn on Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. If everyone in your, your family owns a, an Android, then you can turn off Apple CarPlay, and it gets rid of that icon on the screen for you. Different apps in here, okay? You can update, a ma uh, update your ma apps automatically if you want, okay? Again, here's another spot to go into some of the audio stuff, like you got Bose Audio Pilot. Okay, you've got uh, tone settings, and that's where we were before. Um, you can do an explicit content filter. So, oodles, oodles of stuff. All right. Now, if I go to vehicle, I get some of the safety system stuff. Uh, so, there's climate and air quality. I do like the rear seat reminder. Kind of, if you close the door and start to lock it, and there's it senses movement, then it warns you. So, you know, we have some kids that are left in the seats, unfortunately, um, and this will help warn you if there's someone back there. So collision and detection systems. This does have the haptic feel back seat, so it will vibrate. You're behind. If you get too close to a little dashed line on a highway or a car or something, but let me tell you, you know when it vibrates, so you know something's wrong. Uh, it has forward collision system here, alert and brake, and uh, let's see, this is forward pedestrian detection, adaptive cruise go notifier, lane change alert, rear cross traffic alert, and rear pedestrian detection. Now, any one of these, you, it, you just click on it. So let's do forward collision system. And uh, Cadillac does a great job, uh, and they've got this explanation here, so you can read it. And then you can decide what, it, what you want. You want alert and brake, you want just the alert, or do you want it off completely? And then you can choose. And when you're done, okay, you would just click it and then you click the back arrow. Now I'm gonna leave it on the safest setting possible. And there it is, it's set. Okay? Um, adaptive cruise go notifier alerts you when adaptive cruise control brings a vehicle to, vehicle to a complete stop behind another stopping vehicle and that vehicle begins to move. So if you're snoozing, don't ever snooze while you're driving. Um, you, it'll notify that the car ahead of you has moved and you need to accelerate because it's not going to for you. Okay, Let's, so all these are under here, right? And so you have all sort of these little minor changes you can make, turn things off, turn things on. Okay, let's go back here. Um, comfort and convenience. Hands-free liftgate, you can uh, have it on or off. Reverse tilt mirror. Wait. Reverse tilt mirror applies to your outside right and left mirrors. And you can set it to be on for driver and passenger, on just driver, on just passenger. Okay, so they tilt 
when you put it in reverse. So if I hit, if I hit it, okay, and I put it in reverse, it automatically tilts down. Shows you the curve. The minute I go to drive, it tilts right back up to a normal position, which for me, that's an awesome feature. I would use that all the time. Okay, uh, remote folding mirrors, rain sensing wipers, auto wipe if you put it into reverse, okay, like a courtesy wipe. So those are all under comfort and convenience. Lighting, okay? You can, uh, vehicle locator lights, you can turn those on or off so that when you hit the remote, they flash. Uh, exit lighting, how long do you want it to be on? So, you know, there, there's your choices. Okay? 30 seconds, 60, or 120 seconds. I like the feature. I leave those on in my car all the time. Um, all your remote lock and unlock and, and start settings here. So this is a whole other menu under this, right? There's so many things I can't possibly get through all of them, but at least you'll know where they were. Remote start auto cool seats. Remote start auto heat seats, okay? And basically what that does is this car has a, a sensor in it that senses temperature, the inside temperature of the car. And if it senses it's too cold, it'll turn on the heated seats, the heated steering wheel uh, for you, okay? And that is a really nice feature. And it really bothers me because my car doesn't do that, but my wife's car does, and she won't let me drive it. Okay, remote window operation. So um, I'm not sure what that one is, but I think it's yeah. Okay, basically, if, if you it'll, you can use your remote to lower your your windows. So if you're walking out to a parking lot on a hot day, you just want to roll them down a minute just to vent some hot air as you're approaching that kind of stuff. All right, remote left in vehicle alert. Remote left in vehicle alert alerts you when the keyless entry transmitter is left in the vehicle and the vehicle is not running. Okay? So you can't lock your keys in the car. That's what that boils down to. Okay. Teen driver. If you have uh, teen drivers, uh, this is a really nice mode. You can, I can't, I'm not going to go into it because we have to do some settings in there, but you can geofence the car so you get an alert if it leaves that perimeter area. Uh, you can uh, reset, like turn on all the safety systems in the car so they can't be turned off. Like, you know, leave trash and control on so they can't do burnouts. Uh, things like that. Uh, and it'll actually give you a report card on your teen's driving habits. Like heavy acceleration, moderate acceleration, what the braking's like. Pretty cool stuff for a parent. You also do have what's very common as a valet mode. And that disables things like the, the audio system and that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, let's go back to home for a minute. And uh, you have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. You do have uh, in-vehicle apps. It's not going to load them up right now out here. But you, there are several apps that you can download and put on here yourself. Okay? Um, you do have the OnStar services. You have climate control if you want to control it from here. In the other review, I already showed you all the physical buttons. Really no need to go into this at all except for the sync button. Okay? But again, if you're monkeying with the controls, the minute you hit something on the climate control, it brings up the buttons you need, and then you can press the sync. Okay, um, let's see. You can also go with the rear control and control that from here. You can turn it on off, you can turn it to auto, and you can lock the rear passengers out from using it. So if your two-year-old is constantly changing the temperature on you, and you know it's 95 degrees on a 95-degree day, you can do that. All right, let's go back to the home screen here. Um, yeah, this is one I really like. Uh, and we saw it on the Corvette. Mm -hmm. Okay, video recorder. This is built, has got a built-in camera system that you can, and it won't do it now because I don't have a card, but you can actually record the, the, using the cameras on the car. Okay. Um, I'm not exactly positive which cameras it uses, but it's recordable, saves to an SD card, and you can play it back on this screen, you can play it back on a computer. All right, so let's go back to home screen here. Uh, camera settings. Oh, my word. I, I, I love this, both on, you know, just the GMC products in general, and Cadillac has the same system. Okay, so here's my rear view camera. I have got, actually, excuse me, it's my front view camera, Okay. Uh, I'm going to change that. So I just go down here and click. Now it's my rear view camera. Okay, if I go over here, 
I can say I want this front view. It's a little, little uh, more of a wider view, but it, it gets a little curved. I want to do the same thing in the back. Okay. If I want to magnify on there, I can magnify towards the front end, so I can kind of almost see straight down, and then straight back on the back side. Okay. I can also kind of get a 360 sound uh, look, like I'm going from the front, right, with a camera, and I kind of see everywhere around there. That's just awesome. Okay. And I can do the same thing from the back. Okay. Over here, I've got this. This is the 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 the, the funkiest view, but basically, this is. Uh, this is your right rear tire. This is your left rear tire. Okay, if I hit it again, I get my front right and my front left. It took me a minute to look at that picture and figure out what I was seeing there, but that's what it is. Okay, then I can, of course, magnify towards the hitch if I want. Okay, now, if that's not enough for you, you can press this little arrow here and we go into, okay, we need, uh, let's see, where is the trailer view? Here we go. Um... I think I'm on the wrong camera. Oh, that's why I'm... Okay. Let's go here and go to the back one. And now we'll go here. Okay. So, guidelines on. Guidelines. Okay. There's the there's the main guidelines, right? And they swivel. If I hit it again, gives me the um, trailer hitch guideline. And if I go again, it turns them all off. So, pretty cool. And then this one is supposed to be a sort of a combination. So I, I'm looking at this from the back camera and then I'm looking at down from top. Kind of an interesting, interesting view. So multiple things you can do with the backup cameras. All right, let's go back to the home button here quick. And uh, through my Cadillac and, and you can access all sorts of things like remote start, find your vehicle, all that kind of stuff. Um, and your car would come with uh, like a, so much prepaid for you that you could get to try out. And then afterwards, it would turn into a, a monthly subscription. I do like down here, they give you these are all shortcuts. So you can click on any one of these and it goes right to that particular one. And these are always on here. Okay. Um, you have uh, 4GLT a hotspot. And there's your temp current temperature outside and the time. Um, up here, you have parking sensors. You can front and rear, you can turn on or off. Okay, just by clicking on it. Okay, so that's that's uh, park assist. So it'll help you do a parallel park and a perpendicular park. Um, this is your auto start stop feature. So you can turn that off there if you want. Your hazards and then your lane keeping assist on or off. All right, so here's your uh, physical mute button and your physical home key. And then... All right, and so that's a wrap on the infotainment center and the driver's information center on the 2020 Cadillac XT6. And, uh, you know, click the link uh, below or above where it is on the screen here, and you can watch the whole review of the entire car. Outside, Rob does. I do a general of the interior. Thanks for watching.